I'm pleased to say I'm joined by Australia's Tory Kuish. Thanks for the time, Tory. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. How are you going? Doing good, thank you. And we're, we're talking at the start of the week that you make your World Championship return as part of the WDF Women's World Championship at Lakeside. How are you feeling now, just a handful of days before it all gets underway? It's, it's good. The moment hasn't hit me yet. I don't think it will until I get off the plane on Wednesday morning. But I um, had a good practice today, so I'm looking forward to it. So we'll just see what, what can happen. And I remember watching your World Championship debut in 2020. The commentators mentioned it was your dad that got you into darts. When did you first start playing and what was it about the game that got you interested? Um, I was about 14, so I've been playing for just over 10 years now. I don't know, it was, it was something different for me. I played sport a lot, like six days a week. I was very full on with my basketball, so I didn't really think of anything else. And then one night... My dad had a friend over and he had a son that's a little bit older than me and we were throwing and he goes, oh, why don't you give it a go and, and have a throw? And, and I did and I liked it and it's, the rest is history, really. just kept playing and, and it happened to have a good few times for me. So I'm, I'm pretty lucky, to be honest. Well, living in Australia, what was the dart scene like growing up? What would you pick out as your highlights from your time, I guess, in the, the youth ranks before you made that step up to the senior level? You know, I played a few Australian championships in the juniors and and had some had good... It was more like a lot of learning, you know, behavioural, uh, you know, mentally, dart-wise, you know, with the counting and all that. But I had a, a moment in um, in Queensland and I, and I was the first um, junior to win all three singles titles and it was one of those things that I don't think I'll ever underestimate. I was, I was pretty stoked about that. I think that's still one of my finest achievements to this date, if I'm honest. And away from Steel Tip, my co-host on our show, Burton, a few weeks back called you one of the best soft tip players in the world. And I was looking back 2017, you were the first woman to make the quarterfinals of one of the world soft tip stages in Hong Kong. How special was that run for you? Uh, I still, I'm still a bit baffled by that, to be honest. Like, I went there and I didn't really have much, much expectation. And um, we went across and, and I was just, just trying to play. I wasn't really... I didn't have anything to look look for. Like I was just like, I'm just going to give it a go. Um, I didn't even know that there was no lady had gone past 32 at that point. Um, and it got to the 32, and it was just me and Fallon. And and I got through and played a few games on stage. And all of a sudden, I'm on the top eight, and I'm like, oh, where where did this this whole day go? I have no idea. I think I was just full of adrenaline, and it was probably the best starts I've played, like full dart. Uh, day of darts that I've played in ever to be honest it was it was real special and of course since then we've seen you make a, a name for yourself in the, the steel tip side but do you still play much soft tip now or is all the focus on steel tip nah I haven't I actually haven't played soft tip much since Hong Kong because I just I've been so busy um, with the steel tip stuff and obviously COVID shut down everything so haven't really had much opportunity to go back to soft tip but you know one day maybe but right now I'm going to focus on the steel tip see how that goes That's fair enough well let's get back to the steel tip and the, the following year 2018 you and Leanne Marie yeah. Wilson team up to win the women's pairs in the, the WDF Asia Pacific Cup out in South Korea what, what did that win mean to you? Uh, that was that was one of the most fun days I've had, I think, at darts. And Leanne's a very good friend of mine, and we just gelled together so well. And that kind of win, it really put into perspective of how special it is to play for your country and how special it is to play with your friends as well and how lucky I was that I got to play alongside a really good friend of mine. And all day, everything just worked out for us. And, yeah, just stay we were a bit stoked and excited about that. It was a bit of an understatement, I can tell you that much. Yeah. Well, that year you also made the trip over to the UK to play in the BDO World Championship qualifiers. When did wanting to qualify for the Women's World Championship become a, a goal of yours? It kind of just, it, it kind of was just one of those things, like one of the ex- expectations um, that was like, oh, I'm going to go over and play um, a couple of tournaments. I'll give the qualifiers a go and kind of all just came together all at once and all these opportunities were thrown at me and I just had to grab them. So I did whatever I could to, to get over there and just play darts and gain that experience against the best players in the world. Well, back then the, the field was only 16 players for the World Championship and as someone based in Australia, it was even harder to, to qualify. 2019, you made the trip to Denmark, Wales for two of the bigger Open events. How did you find those experiences? Surreal. It's it's a whole different game and a whole different event over there. Like tournaments here, we don't get, you know, that many players and to go over there and just to see, you know, 
so many ladies and so many people involved was such an eye-opening experience and the venues we were playing in you would never play in anything like that over here so it was a massive eye-opener and yeah I just it, it that trip alone just created so many opportunities and made my game a hell of a lot better than what it was before I went so that trip is a real huge part of of my improvement and my development as a dart player really. 2019 that was such a busy year for you as we we also saw you make the semi-finals of the WDF World Cup women's singles the last 16 of the World Masters losing out to Dieter Hedman on both occasions I think the Masters was a deciding leg so you were just one leg away from the, the TV stage how much did you take away from those runs? Just pure experience you know I put it all under my belt um, after those and you know that one leg away in that 16 that hurt I can tell you that much but you know you try and take the positives out of all that so I learned a lot from Dita that day and, and a lot from myself and my own game and, and hopefully I can fix those things up for any future games but yeah it definitely definitely was a tough tough one Well it looked like you were going to end up just falling short in the rankings for the O2 but Trina Gulliver's withdrawal handed you that spot. What was your reaction when you found out you were in and what was that build-up like before leaving home to come back over to the UK and realise that dream of playing in the World Championship? It was funny because I actually got the phone call at like 4am and I was asleep <laughs> and I'm thinking, who is calling me at this time? Like, what could possibly happen? And I looked at it and it was Des and I was like, oh, that's a bit unusual. Like, why would he be calling me? At, you know, it's not the middle of the night in the UK, but the middle of the night here. So I answered and he's like, oh, you're in basically, you know. Unfortunately, Trina's had to pull out, but we're going to announce it within the next few days. And then it was like just trying to get everything organised in such a short period. I didn't get much time to prepare. It was pretty much, you're in, jump on a plane and head over. So yeah, it, was, it was a lot. It was a very overwhelming experience, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Definitely not. And it was the, the battle of the debutantes you faced, Bo Greaves, in the, the first round. What was it like getting up on that stage, playing in a world championship for the first time? Um, it was it was just, I can't even explain it. I'm not very good with my words, to be honest. I mean, I talk a lot, but I'm not great at a few words. Yeah. But um, it was it was definitely one of the, the greatest experiences of my life. And, you know, to play someone like Bo Greaves, who, although she's a lot younger than me, she's a lot younger than a lot, a lot of the players, and she she taught me so much, and um, I felt more comfortable playing against someone that I knew and, and spoke to. So, yeah, I don't really know how to explain it. It's, it. it's something that you don't really get until you're there in the moment and, and all the time and effort that you put into the dartboard and you get there, and it feels like it's all worth it and it all makes sense. And that was, of course, a little over two years ago now. Since then, a lot's gone on off the hockey. We've had the demise of the BDO, the, the pandemic, the WDF taking on the Women's World Championship. What's that time been like for you? Has it been tough to stay motivated with darts at times or has the return of all these events now made you hungry to pick up where you left off? No, I, I, had, a real, I had a real tough um, couple of years um, with darts. You know, I had a, had a very... I was very convinced that I wasn't going to play anymore and or that I was going to have a little bit of a break um, for, for a while and all that stuff has come back and it's kind of made, made, made me the love for the game. I've just got it back now and, and I'm very, very look, looking forward to, to keep going and, and to give it a go. Good to hear. And I, I think there was a, a 10 month break for ranking events in Australia from 2020 to the start of 2021, and you won the first event back. How good was it to be back out playing? Oh, it was so good. Um, it was in Morwell, I think, and, and I was a bit nervous because I hadn't really played, played for, for quite a while. So I was really um, not looking forward to my game, uh, looking forward to going to the darts and seeing all my friends, most definitely. But I was a bit scared on how the darts were going to go. But I had a pretty good time and, and, and played played not too bad so it was it was good to get back in and get back into the winning circles that's for sure and a, a year on from that first event back how are things now in, in Australia darts wise is everything back to normal are you back playing as often as you were pre-pandemic what's the scene like now um, it's slowly getting there um, we had a tournament a few weeks ago um, not a ranked one just a just a country one and we went I went down there for the singles and it felt like everything was normal again. So I, I think darts is slowly coming back in where I am and I think normality is kicking in and 
yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good good year, I reckon. Excellent. Well, this weekend we'll see you play at Lakeside, one of the most famous venues in darts. But you've you've travelled to a lot of different countries to play the game. What's been your favourite place to visit so far? Oh, probably Japan. I don't think you can go past Japan. Um, I've been there twice, and and it's never disappointed. It's one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And the darts over there is, is incredible. It's, it's huge over there. So I definitely think of Japan. Nice. Well, you play Scotland's Lorraine Hyde, who's making her World Championship debut in the in the first round on Sunday at Lakeside. I think Lorraine called you her twinny after the draw was made. I guess you two know each other well. <laughs> yeah, we've got... Uh, we met in Romania at the World Cup and, and we got on pretty, pretty good, so... We've spoken probably nearly every day since that day and, and the fact that we drew each other is just comical. Like we, we were having <laughs> such a good laugh about it. So uh, at least we've got someone that we know and, and we're both comfortable with each other. So hopefully we can put on a good show for the crowd and for everyone watching at home. Definitely. And, and lastly, at, at 24, you're still one of the, the youngest in this expanded field of players for the women's draw. Bo Greaves being the only one younger, I think. But for you, having seen what Kareen Hammond has done moving from Australia to England to pursue a darts career, is that something that you would like to try one day? I mean, never say never, but looking at it now, I, I don't see it happening anytime soon. But you never know what the future holds, I guess, and the opportunities that you get. Well, the next opportunity is Lakeside this week- weekend. Wish you all the best for it, Tori. Thank you very much for joining us and safe travels over here to the UK later this week. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.